Tonight brings me great pleasure to introduce to the world one of our favorites here. And like I was saying earlier, he's got to be one of the best lyricists to ever come out of this country. I'm not just saying it to gas it at the start of the interview either. I mean that. So can we get some noise in the building? All the pluggers at the back, all this management, everyone, producers, we need the full gang involved. Because Devlin is in the building. Chase. Thank you very much, man. Inside. Deaths. I'm gonna blush, bro. That was that was a nice intro. Do you know what? It like it's a, it's an intro of an artist that deserves like a rightful intro because you, Thank you, you, you've worked very hard for a long time to to earn those kind of intros, man. To earn all of these kind yeah. of accolades that you get. It's, it's been a minute, hasn't it, man? It has. It's, it's been a, a more than a minute, and I feel like now might be the perfect time to kind of just. Go all the way back and just just kind of just take it from the beginning, Des, because we look ahead to 2017. You've got the album dropping this year. We're yep. all excited about that. You know, singles out there at the minute, killing it. Like it feels like Devlin's definitely back at it, full yeah, steam man. ahead. Yes, definitely. Obviously, I was I went around for a minute, but uh we're back and out just wanna read it again, you know? And that's exactly what oh. we're doing, man. But if we take it like all the way back, like I'm talking early, early days, like Let's talk Dagenham. Let's talk Essex. Let's talk going to school in Raynham, like growing up. What 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 was the uh, early Devlin getting up to, man? Around those times, uh, probably being a rascal, you know, what I mean? <laughs> Run, running around. And uh, I, just, I, I always loved music. You know what I mean? I said from being with my mum in the car when I was young, whether it was Diana Ross or the the Bangles or whatever. So mum's had a good taste in music, defo. Mum, me mum listens to quite a lot of different yeah. stuff. And I think that's, yeah, when I remember being young and I just thought, you know what, I was always singing along in the car. And that's when I love music. By the time I was in my teens or 12, that's when So Solid Cruise and all that were about. Yeah. And that obviously that uh, gripped me. And then, yeah, and then Graham evolved out of that. And then when I, the Graham, I was listening to people like yourself, you know what I mean? On Rinse and Roll Deep and Dogsy and them boys. And yeah, I was involved. I thought, yeah, that's the that's, that's the, the stuff. Path. I like the garage stuff, but that was more it was more raw, energetic, and people were talking about things that were going on around me as I was growing up, I suppose, you know? And but you like, know, like so many grime MCs I've spoken to, like, it's hard to have a full-on conversation about how they got into it and where they the path they took without their mentioning so solid. It was like such a <laughs> such a legendary moment for, for for UK kids to look at their TV screens. Because there wasn't, no, none of us, no one was on the TV as such, really. And to see those guys really just like up there, bright lights, Brit Awards, like winning stuff, yeah, number one. Yeah, they were doing it, it, man. You know it what I mean? Mad. And uh, definitely, as I said, I, I like the old school garagey sound, but they were a bit more raw, so solid, and obviously with the bars. And then when Grime came off that, oh, that was me. And I thought, yeah, this is, I'm going to have a go at this. Yeah. Oh. So when you say you wanted to have a go, was it, was it literally a case of, I'm gonna go home from school. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna buy a pad. I'm gonna just write some bars. Or was it kind of stuff going on in your head at first? Uh, do you know what? I, I always said it was weird. I moved ass, and, and I was on a. Me and my brother were on two water beds in an empty room. Wow! And I had an old radio, and I flicked. You know it on. what? I'm. I'm a bit. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a bit jealous because when I was a kid, the water bed was no, a hype. No, I mean, like. Uh, oh, water, water beds. <laughs> blow up the. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, whoa. Blow, no, no, I weren't living it. I was, good I was then, like, you know wow, I mean? how, how did you manage that? But, uh, but yeah, but uh, and I had our radio. And Sharky come on, I, flick, I was flicking through and I Sharky heard, Major. if I got caught, I'd be defenseless. Just did a judge talking about I'm um, senseless. Wow. Fucked out, no way out. I thought that's a bit more complex, yeah. do you know what I mean? So then I started writing some really rubbish lyrics. I've got a couple of pens and pads. Yeah. Probably wrote some disastrous. Can you, can you remember like either the line no, or one no, of the early even ones? even if I could. You were... <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. But yeah, then uh, started writing, and obviously I weren't very good. Like no one would be at first. Then I started getting it together a little bit, and me and me pals, they was uh, trying to make beats, and we had mics hooked up with stockings in the Eighthway Road, and yeah, and it just started evolving from there. Crazy. Know? These kind of beats and rhythms were, were like, they were the first kind of grime rhythms, man. These were the beats that, uh, you know what I mean, put me onto, although, although you was just saying it was garage as such, but they so sort of, yeah, sort of like, probably that darker element. Yeah, yeah. and uh. the same way it was happening over South, like with So Solid back in East, you had obviously Rinse and Deja, yeah. and you had a bunch of different crews from Nasty to Roll D, and everyone was like, we need some beats that the MCs can really like get stuck into. It was them sort of beats, man. You know what I mean? Definitely. That uh, 
I was involved. Yeah, yeah. the energy it was dark and yeah, and that, what, I what, think that captivated. What me. was the first bar that you, you was happy with, you know, sharing publicly and where where <laughs> where and how did you share it? Was it a playground thing? Was it were you up on radio pirate radio by then or what was it? I was spitting bars in school, I was on pirate radios in Barking when I was twelve, you know, anywhere I could get involved then, do you know what I mean? Uh any, I was listening to MCs, yeah. I had all the tapes, I had the, the rap CDs, it was all lyrics, lyrics, so, lyrics, lyrics. A, a lot of MCs don't even realise, but just by doing all of those things you were doing, like you were you were training yourself up. It's like okay. doing some kind of Shaolin training, like those tape packs, listening to those sets, mm-hmm. going, being in the playground in like some crazy cypher type thing or running up to a pirate radio station. That is all like real Shaolin training, I feel like, for Grime MCs. Like, it was, obviously, I was very young at the time, but it's mad. Everyone was hungry. You almost had to fight over the mic. Yeah. That's probably busted and ruined and everything. <laughs> yeah. You had to hold it together in certain places for it to come, to exactly, work. Exactly, but as you said, it was training. That's when you develop, yeah. at learning how to deliver the lyrics and getting better, thinking, cool, I better pull my finger out. I need better lyrics for next yeah. week because I know they're coming. And Yeah, man, and then met, uh, met people along the way. You yeah. know what I mean? And obviously, it wasn't too long before you linked up with, you know, fellow locals like the Dogzilla. That's it, The man. rest of OT. That's when I first came across you. Um, being on Rinse at the time and, and Dogzy um, was a ferocious MC. Like, it, it was, that's uh, one way of putting it. Do you know what? I can't really remember an MC before him that was that on the angry, no, f- you know, fresh on There road. weren't, there weren't. <laughs> there, in, that, in those days, like, you used to play tracks and you play a dogsy track and people like be like, whoa, that's whoa. Yeah, he's mate. like, he's he's angry and he's saying loads. And he was sick, Dogsy was sick. But it was good to meet them, obviously, where I was from Dagnum. I was always a fan. I used to listen in and take them boys. And when I met them, for a friend of a friend, my pal Frenchie, we just, we just clicked me and Dogs, yeah. man. Do you know what I mean? He's got a good personality. We clicked and I didn't think he'd shout me up. He shouted me one day. He said, do you fancy coming to the studio to Danny C's? And I went there and uh, ended up staying there overnight. My old girl went mad because I was school <laughs> the next morning. I was in cover. And ever since then, that was it. Yeah. We'd done heat up that night as it happens. Wow. And uh, yeah, ever since then, that was history. You know what I mean? We just rolled out then. Then from then it was like OT crew was... was was getting shouted and you guys were really starting to, to to make names for yourselves, man. They had the two shows. I think Shots had a show and Glamour had a show. We was up rinse twice a week. So from there, that was it. We Shots and Glamour, of course, two of the DJs. Glamour, yeah. and obviously. And uh, then I had pals and they started rolling with me and we had loads of us up yeah. at rinse in the end. It was good. It was like one of them old school nasty sets. Yeah. You're just mad, you know what I mean? Bare different MCs and... And yeah, good times, man. But that's when the fan base started growing, obviously, on the radio. And I guess it was not too long after that, you know, doing these pirate radio sets, like you mentioned, you'd already been to to, to legend. For those that don't know, like legendary studios, places like Danny C's, who's yeah. like so many MCs used to rent his studio and pass through and he used yeah. to engineer and it was a real legendary spot. When was it where you're like, right, this is my first track. I've, I've, done, I've got a track. It's finished. I've got one. Or was it, a, was it a crew track? Was it a solo thing? Do you know what? I had tunes that I just recorded in a manner in like bedroom setups and yeah. that. But they weren't great. But then when I'd done that heat up tune, I think that was the... I listen back now, I cringe at it. Do you know what I mean? But uh, that was probably when I've, I've got it together a little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? It started coming together, I felt like. Tell us about Community Outcast as well, man. Because that, that's got to be like... That's an early one, along with London City. Yeah, man, I wrote, I think I was about 15 or 16 when I wrote that. Crazy. But, uh, I don't, you're always trying to think of different subjects, I suppose, when you're writing. I don't know why that keeps playing so loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why, why does it keep playing so loud? I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's it, just trying to find different subjects and, yeah, that one come out, man. I don't know where it come from. I don't think I write some of them sometimes. Yeah. They just come into your You're head talking uh, London <laughs> City or, or Community uh, Outcast? Community Outcast. All of them. <laughs> People are getting involved. We're getting some questions in as well. I'm going to run through some of the questions uh, in a little while. But coming off the back of that Community Outcast and, you know, the, the feedback, I'm, I'm guessing was, was good feedback. Yeah, I think that was one of the tunes. I think people started uh, paying attention to what I was doing. Yeah. And I think it got me a little exposed. It was one of the f- like, first videos we ended up doing as yeah. well, along with London City. So I've probably done a lot for me. I want to talk about London City especially because that record, like, it, it's, there's certain records, like, I've been across so many records, like, I couldn't even count the amount of records that I've, I've enjoyed playing, loved even. Like, some, I'm, some, there's a certain level of record and then there's, like, a pinnacle level of record <laughs> that, like, as soon as I hear the record, it's like, 
it just does something that like, takes me back to a certain place or yeah. reminds me of a certain place in time or just has that nostalgia to it. And and London City for me is that that one record of yours that will always have that effect, man. It's yeah. like I was amazed when I first heard it. I'm not gonna lie. Do you know? I think that really that was my first attempt at like a, a softer, mellower song. Really, yeah. You know what I mean. It was, that was that was my mother again. She said, "Try and make an happy song." You sound depressing with your music. <laughs> so I did, and it went. All, it it went, went all right. right suppose, yeah. It went all right. And, and at the time, this was what was this like? Channel U was was flying at the time, and and I believe this was like the the video was number one on Channel U for like ten weeks. Do you, do you know what? It was, uh, we just met my pal Darren. Bless him. Yeah, and, God bless uh, Darren, man. Uh, uh, AKA and uh, me and me managers. You know what I mean? Be, uh, and he just took us on. We clicked. And he give us. He said, "Look, we can do so many videos. You know what I mean? I'll put you on." And yeah. we done a couple. And yeah, London City went well. Do you know what I mean? And made a good friend. Absolute classic for those like. Just, I think we just need to go back and just just. If you close your eyes, like you feel like you're actually taking the trip to London City with you. The Everyone music's at home. Nice. The music's nah, pleasant, the music's right? lovely yeah, as well. I mean, but let, let's nice. not take away from from the lyrics. It's it's a it's a. They marry very well, man. He's in the building. People are loving what's going on as well. People are loving that you're in the building. Uh, they're loving the fact that you're back and you've got a brand new body of work that's dropping in 2017, which we are going to talk about. We're really excited about that. Big up to Josh Miller, says he loves community uh, outcasts. Big up to Reese Nathan, uh, loving the fact that we played London City. Uh, big up to Lucas, saying pure nostalgia. Nathan says just in time. Big up to Leanne, says London City really does take me back to Channel U days. Big up to Tom, says Target chatting with Devlin, going back to the beginning. Big up, like people are just loving the fact that you're here and you're back and we're talking about the old days. We're looking forward like... It's a good moment, man. Thank you, man. Big out everyone, lots. Thank you. Much love. Uh, some uh, Matt has actually asked you a question that you'll probably be able to make more sense of than me. How come I haven't seen you down to Sydney Russell recently? I feel, um, like, he talk, I feel like he talks like that. <laughs> uh, is it like a, a snooker place or something? No, nah, like, no. Nah, do you know what? Sydney Russell's a school in Dagna, but we used to play oh, football there on a Tuesday oh, night. That's why he's talking about putting All my the pals got corner. lazy, Matt. My pal has got too lazy. <laughs> I, I used to love it, but uh, yeah, we run out of numbers in the end. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, yeah. Sick. So you was a pretty keen footballer as well? I, I used to be when I was young. Then I, I went over Sydney Russell. I was sick the first three yeah. times. Like, <laughs> I got nothing for seven years. Like, but I got those, back into it. Those times, three so. times as gas Matt, he's like, right, I've definitely ain't I've been got over. Me, me goalkeeper over here. Oh, he's, he's in the building. Yeah, he used to go missing. He's so, the reason why <laughs> football don't happen no more. So you, you basically <laughs> just need like nine more players yeah. and, and you're back. Like, what was it? Six, oh, six only, seven oh, a side exactly. we'd play. You could, yeah. you could pull it off. I remember like we used to have Roll Deep versus Rough Squad on a Sunday, yeah. like 11 a side. And... Oh, bet that got heated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couple times. I love for competitive. You know, like competitive. I lose me marbles. With them. <laughs> <laughs> like Rico, people are like, ah, it's hard work having them on your team. Passionate, like, mate. Yeah, it's passion. hard work. Uh, but we digress. We're back to back to the story, man. So London City drops, community outcast drops. Your videos are, are, are now doing the rounds on Channel U. Yep. You're starting to, to perform out and about live. What was it like? You know, having that 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 early audience in a, in a live setting in a club. What was what did that feel like at first? Do, do you know what? Uh, it was quite scary, man. Obviously, because you go from writing words and then on pirate radio station, you was behind the scene. No yeah. one ever saw your face, really. Unless yeah. Risky Roads was slipped over <laughs> yeah. or practice hours yeah. and all. But uh, yeah, then boom, now you're on the front line and people are taking notice. So yeah, yeah it, it was a shock. But do, do you remember nice. where your, like the first significant event where you're like, whoa, that was, that was something? Northampton. Me and Getz done Northampton. And everyone was coming up to me afterwards asking for pictures and it, and it probably blew my head. I was only young. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Getz is going to me, listen, like, these people love you in that case. Like, <laughs> I wanted to get in the car and get out. I ain't yeah. used to all these people around, yeah. around me and that, but that was a bit shocking. You know yeah. what I mean? But, yeah, we got used to it. Yeah. I, I'm glad you mentioned Getz as well because you guys seem to form a real strong bond, man, and, and yeah. that kind of led to the movement. Yeah, man. Which yeah. is still, like... I can't. I, I've, tr I've actually tried earlier. I was trying to think of a collective that you could even match lyrically with the movement. You know, people have their strengths in different yeah. areas, and a collective usually has like a lyricist, like a ladies' yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Or like someone who's good with hooks or whatever. But it felt like the movement was just like it was almost unfair. Like having, <laughs> you know, when you play Ultimate Team on FIFA and you're like, you've got Messi and you've got it. Like, how do you put Getz and Devlin? And Merkston and Scorcher. And Rich. And Rich! 
All in one collective. Unique. Criminal would pass through, wouldn't he? Do you know what I mean? Lights was... <laughs> That that was such healthy competition. Yeah. I think that that helped me a lot because you know you were the best of the best. So coming week weren't an option. You know what I mean? You had to make sure, you, and and it was an incentive to yeah. run. I was gonna say like you was already like on your toes, but you know when their movement set started happening and like you're 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 on the phone to a wretch or on the phone to Getz and yeah. he's, he's t telling you about his new sixteen. He's <laughs> just written like that must be a mad incentive to go and just write something crazy. As I said, you always know you you got to be good because these are the best. Yeah. But me and Getz used to do it all the time. I'd spit Getz bars and he'd go to me, you little mug, I'm staying indoors <laughs> for a week. <laughs> I watch what I come down, I'd hear one of his bars and I'd go, oh, bro. Yeah. I know I'm there, but I ain't quite, I need to, you know, I mean, put that work in. So we was always pushing each other, which was only healthy and it was nothing but love yeah. between us. So just healthy competition. Um, I'm not actually surprised that you've not, you've not ended up in too many public, you know, out there clashes as well like clashing uh, I feel like people have avoided you bruv I uh, feel like they don't they didn't really want it uh, do you know what people have said my name and that but I've learned a lot yeah I'm, I'm wiser now and I just think it's, it's music at the end of the day man there's no point wasting energy or making anyone else big or yeah. It's pathetic, so I just do my thing. I won't yeah. waste my energy, do you know what I mean? But you live and learn as you grow older, you know? I've got to ask you um, while you're here, while we're talking about movement as well, because I did have Getz in on In Depth. Uh, yeah. He was actually the first one we did. And I asked him about the movement, and every time we get someone who's part of the movement in, like, the fans always jump in. There's going to be a movement question, like, when can we hear <laughs> a movement? Where, is there ever going to be, like, a, a movement reunion, a set? If there is, can we have it on my show? Um... Or a track or a project, like, can we expect to hear the movement together, all five of you? I don't know, man. Guess answer was this. This is what Get said to me. I'm on it, and his exact instructions were, when you see any of the rest of the movement, ask them. Do you know what? There was talk a little while ago. I, I said I was up for it. It didn't happen. Everyone's busy. Right, so and that's, you and Getz stuff, have both right. said you're up for it. <laughs> I'm, ticking off. For it. I'm ticking them off. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I said, I'm just trying to establish myself. I'm just coming back with these new tunes. But yeah. I said I was Dan, but it never happened, you know, but... Yeah. I, I you guess never know. It, you never know. It, it, it is hard. Like, people are, you know, there's life to live, firstly. Yeah, and then, it, then yeah. there's obviously everyone's doing their individual things, and it, it's not always easy, man. Everyone's but, got kids, everyone's got yeah, vibes, everyone's. Well, I ain't got kids, but. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking for everyone else. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm sure the fans would love to see that. But yeah, man, just 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 hearing that you're you're up for it is good. I'm going to get through to the other three of them, man. We're going we're gonna to try. <laughs> you're going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, somehow, we've got to, bro. That collaborations, you know, it wasn't just a movement that you were making tracks with, you were you were jumping up and popping up on on different people's collaborations. You worked with like Jesse J, you teamed up with Labyrinth, you worked with Ed Sheeran. Yeah, I've been who, very lucky, man, yeah. You was working with Ed early as well, like long before the like gazillion sells Ed Sheeran. Do you know what I mean? This was <laughs> yeah. like early Ed when, for those people who don't know as well, like Ed Sheeran didn't come up the, the natural kind of guitar playing singer songwriter route. Like I used to be at Grime Raves and I'd see Ed Sheeran in the corner and I'd, band, I'd think, like, what's he doing? <laughs> then you, next thing you know, you turn around and be on stage with his guitar, spitting grime bars. Yeah, like, he knew every grime MC's bars. He he's was like good, an encyclopedia. Yeah, he's good. He's a good spitter. Yeah, it's he's crazy. Talented. It's crazy. I remember once he, he he had he had an actual clash with Manga in I can't remember. I think it was like Chantel Fiddy's birthday party yeah. or something low key. And and yeah, he was just going in. And I remember mm -hmm. thinking, this guy gets to a big audience. Could be crazy. It, I met him on. Like, we was both supporting Example years ago, and just clicked. He's a nice geezer. You yeah. can't really not get on with him. Yeah. But, and he was so talented as well. And we just clicked, and he made me want to up my bars. As, as I said about the movement, like it's healthy competition. I've got yeah. love for you, bro. But I want to. <laughs> yeah. And same with him. Do you know what I mean? He was hungry, and I think he only helped me. He pushed me lyrically as well, which was a benefit. You know. We haven't spoken about your debut album just yet, Bud Sweat and Beers, because. That was an album that, that 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 really just solidified that you were out here and you you were an album artist as well. Yeah, that was, obviously that was uh, one of my biggest successes. You know what I mean? And uh, that's when it took off. That's when we was doing tours and things. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was a uh, <laughs> it was a different level, man. We yeah. Around the country and that. And did it you feel stuff. it? Did you feel the instant kind of you know you did your your record deal? I think it was like 2000 and... Was it beginning of 2010 or 9? Cool, you, you probably know <laughs> you that. It's been a whirlwind since, but... Uh. You was on the BBC Sound of 2010. Yes, We yes. know that much. And then not long after that, the deal came, the album dropped that year. 
So I'm guessing it was like 2010 ish. 10 ish, 11 ish, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, man, like I said, once that album dropped, and like I said, it was like solidifying Devlin the artist. And after, you know, the hype and the Channel U wave and the. The, the pirate radio sets you were you were making songs and yeah, man. having you know big credible releases and hitting the road and doing tours as well I think that's where it all come together for me I felt good then all them years of training we was talking about earlier I felt yeah. like I was actually putting it together quite well and yeah felt good good times man as I said we was all around the country I remember Doug scanned to me we went to Glasgow and I went this is the furthest away from London like I wonder how they all like had a nutty gig up there. He was almost <laughs> emotional. He's going, well, this is some different level stuff, yeah. Aaron. Yeah, good times. Sick. Step up and met some brilliant people. I mean, yeah, some of the best years of my life, I suppose. You know what I mean? Uh, have you got a, a favourite city or place that you've performed or a, a show that you just still remember to this day? It's like, that was just absolutely just off the scale. Do you know what? I could... I, there's so There were so many good ones. We've had good ones everywhere. But I said, that Glasgow gig... When we got there and, we was, and I said it was so far away and we, there was people queuing around the block and it was just mad. They was proper, proper up for it. Made me feel at home and yeah. that's that's when I stepped back. I thought, this is, like, yeah, this is this these really... People, all these people know my lyrics <laughs> yeah. and this is mental. Like, I mean, Yeah, so that took me back a little bit. Sick. So salute the Glasgow crew, man, for turning up. And, so, and... Do you know what? Salute to everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they, that, was, that was a moment I thought, God, like... We've come a long way, yeah, you know what I mean? It's definitely, emotional. man. Um, Stuart McPherson says, I remember seeing this rapper, um, young rapper at the time, supporting Tiny Temper at Shoreditch Town Hall a few years ago. I was Shoreditch blown Town away. Hall. Yeah. Wow. Good, that was a few years ago. Wow, yeah. you, could, you couldn't fit you and Tiny Temper into Shoreditch Town Hall now <laughs> for a gig. Like, where are you going to put all the people? Like, that wouldn't work. <laughs> be a good gig. <laughs> It'd be a very intimate gig, probably. Yeah. A bit more intimate Close. than um, yourself and Tiny are used to now, I guess. Um... You know, Bud Sweat and Beers dropped and not only did you do your, your solo tour, you were popping up on things like One Extra Live and, and some of the other big festivals. What was that like, you know, hitting those big stages with like 50, 20, 30,000 people in the crowd? That, yeah, that, I, I don't know how to explain it really. You think, God, cool, like these people, I'll get to play in front of all these people and yeah, you can't really put it in words. Yeah. Just all then, just writing lyrics in my bedroom where I started. So, God, these people are here, and I'm doing it. I'm living my dream, really. Crazy. I yeah, remember uh, it's a real feeling. Specifically, um, one extra live in 2010, where uh, it was Tinsley Strider who was performing, but he had a track at the time that featured a whole load of you. Like <laughs> it was like Gigs, Professor Green, Chipmunk, Example, Tiny, and yourself. It was a big tune, man. Game over, yeah. How, how did that how did that come together? Because I've always wondered, was you all in the studio or was it like Tinchy was kind of sending it out individually and getting lyrics sent you back? You can't how, get that many people in the studio on the same I know. day. Like, like, I, know thought, everyone's like... I thought that was a bit of a long shot, but then I thought, how, how did people, did, how did, did you hear other people's verses first? Like, was it, was there competition on that track? Were people just doing their thing? I didn't hear anyone's verse and I think that's fair. You shouldn't hear no one else's verse really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I didn't. We hit it. And yeah, when I heard everyone, everyone was so different and big in their own rights yeah. and had their own fan bases. And yeah, it was a really good show, man. I'm glad I was on it. It doesn't feel like one of them tracks where everyone's trying to go for each other or try and have one-upmanship, but everyone does their thing very well on that record. Nah, that's it. As you said, no one's swinging it out, but everyone hit it hard. Yeah, most definitely, man. And and that was performed, uh, that not being the live version, but that was performed at One Extra Live back in 2010. Uh, loads of people getting in touch. Just loving the fact that you're here. Lots of people looking forward to the album. Uh, Stacey, who's a regular listener from Glasgow, she's like, oh man, Glasgow and Scotland. Love you since way back. I should have got her meat to do the accent because it would have had better effect. <laughs> do you want to read that? Do you want to read that tweet for from Stacey for us, please? Oh that, man. Loves you since way back. I can't even read. Every house party. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that had much better effect. Thank you, darling. Me. Cheers. Um, Charlie just says, big tune. Big up to Billy. Says, I haven't, I haven't heard uh, Game Over in years. Absolute banger. Like, people just loving just everything that we're doing. People loving the fact that we're playing some classics. People are looking forward to the album as well. Daisy said, looking forward to the album. And is there a new tour planned? 
uh, want to give people a chance to live with the album, try and learn the words first, yeah. and, that, and then we'll start thinking about. It, That's the thing with like, you know what I mean, with fans these days, it's like as soon as you give them one thing, they're like, all right, tour, she's done a tour, <laughs> set another album, she's done another it's album. Demanding. I want all the videos for every track. Like, I want bonus stuff. I want behind the scenes. Like, like they, they literally like it's a thirsty world out there. That's it. But I said Friday tenth, couple of days, albums dropped, yeah. uh, dropping rather, and. Uh, Give it a few months, let it circulate, and then we'll get about it. Might be some shows in there. Sick. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to talk properly, like a bit more in depth about the album, you know, what it was like putting it together. You know, you haven't dropped a, a full length project in, I think the right time was like, like three years. Three, four, four I've years. Heard, yeah. <laughs> four, I've heard. Something word, like that. Word on the roads, mate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's been a, a, I wouldn't call it a hiatus because you haven't kind of disappeared. You have been dropping tracks and, and jumping up and down on a couple of features here and there, but. A full Devlin project, bruv, it's, it's, it's overdue, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. As you said, I, I said I was out for a minute, then I started uh, jumping on a few features here and there, and I uh, dropped a couple of singles, And but now, four years, <laughs> yeah, they've waited for it, the work's and there. And time's the flown, like, there, so. it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like almost four years since you and Wretch did Off With Their Heads, like, that still feels like... I don't know where the time goes. It's mad, isn't it? It's mad. That feels like yesterday. It does, like, literally, yeah. I remember getting sent it and thinking, oh, these two, and before I'd played it, to like saw it come up in my inbox. Big up Cole, who probably sent it to me. He's in the building. <laughs> Lurking. Yeah, he's here somewhere. I don't, where is he? Oh, he was here. Management. <laughs> um, yeah, seeing it and thinking, oh, Devlin and Wretch on a record. Yeah, do you know what? I was happy. I, I said I've always respected Wretch. Yeah. And it, from the movement days, big lyricist. And to just get that dirty beat, Robbie Lamont on the beat, and he had the strings, and it, yeah, it was dangerous. <laughs> we just and went it, like, for two of the, the, the greatest lyricists to come out of this country to be on the same record as well, like, oof. Yeah, it was nice, no hook, just bumming it old school. Did you both just say, look, no hook on this? Yeah, no, that's Let's what... Let's just go. As soon as I heard that beat, I, I, knew, I knew I wanted Rich on it, like, yeah. let's, just, let's just take it old school, bar for bars. Have you got a favourite track of all time that you've done? I ain't, but then probably... That trim there yeah. has probably come somewhere close. You know what I mean, that just a absolute banger. Just raw, isn't it? Raw. And obviously with Wretch, big feature as well. And Wretch always delivers, man. That's it. That's always, it, man. always. Devlin's in for in depth. Remember, we have been streaming this. You'll be able to watch the video. Uh, don't worry if you've you've been a little bit slow on jumping on the stream. You'll be able to watch the video back on the One Extra YouTube channel. Raw time is like time flies flown. when we have flown, these chats. Mate. Anyone would have thought we've been talking for like ten minutes. I, know, I must have been rambling. <laughs> rambling no, do you know rambling. what? It's, these, these are important moments and stories and like it inspires a whole load of of, of artists and, and your fans obviously just love hearing this kind of stuff so it's all good man now uh, fire in the booth fire charlie the booth. managed to get you in the booth back in 2012. yes it's been, i said a long time ago as well yeah what was it like do you remember the feeling you had when you, you first came in because I'm not, I, I'm not. I'm not a rapper or an MC, but I, I can imagine. You know, when you get that call where you've got your date lined up for your fire yeah. in the booth, it's like, right, this. I need to make sure that I really go in. And it's, it's exactly that. And I knew for a little while. I, well, I knew what I had to do one anyway. Yeah. So then you start thinking about getting bars together, and I think, no, that's not good enough. Because automatically, as you said, now you're going. Everyone's going to have one, and you, you want to be up there. Yeah. To, there's almost like an invisible league table that, like, it's not written anywhere, but it gets talked yeah. about. There's speculation and, like... You've got to make sure it's, it's, it's somewhere near yeah. brilliant. You know what I mean? I, right. I feel like this is a great chance. Just just a little clip of, of your fire in the booth for 2012. I bet you ain't heard it for a minute. Not a minute, no. Let's no. play that right now, man. This is Devlin, fire in the booth back in 2012. Can you believe it? Fire in the booth. Ow. 2012. Let's go! Let's take it back, listen. Yeah, yeah, I think you forget the gym's been a threat and a vet so long, so where's the respect? You ain't rep with DJ Slimzy on set. I ain't heard you wanna take the set. Cause you weren't present when grime weren't pleasant. A game full of shotters and goons and peasants. Raw school ran away with the scene. A man a park at the stickiest lemon. The mic in my hands, I can stick to a felon. Letting off rhymes, my mouth's my weapon. Blowing up south, peck them to strut em. Blowing up west from acting to shepherds. And then my name spread north of calls. Tottenham to Angel, I rock the cradle. And I've been running round east from day. Dagnum to Barking, Hackney to Cable Street. With a lyric in a shot speed. Every man from a manor with a block steep With your blocks like an episode of Dawson's Creek Rest in peace to the S-Go, let's go Anyone who built this scene I'm taking it back to an old school thing Some ocean's deep and he flow too weak Side with me and fly like a frisbee Go against me and dial at Da Vinci I open the pages, I'm writing the history I'm writing the middle of my life is a mystery I went up on an island with Tinchy I label Marley made famous See a minor, that's why I major Shut one eye and stare at my wallet You still won't ever see half of my paper <laughs> 
he went in, bro. <laughs> Why the girl? Why the girl? Yeah, like, like, that's another thing. Why another one of the reasons why I think people definitely just gravitate to you, not just as an MC, but as a as a human. Like you've always been the same person every time I've seen you. Like yeah. you know, like people have their off days, or some people it does they get a bit carried away, and like people do start acting differently from time to time. And you've just been the same. Humble devs, like no matter I like what. I think so. I like, obviously, I probably had my moments, man. I think it was a lot. Where I come up so young, it was <laughs> yeah. a lot. I dealt with a lot. Yeah, yeah. I come from nothing, and do you know what I mean. No yeah. one really. All of a sudden, boom. Yeah. Everyone wants to know your business, where you are, or he's been there. He was. <laughs> yeah. A lot to deal with, yeah. man. But I try, I'll always be grounded. Do you know what I mean? I'll always be grounded. We love that, man. Might have some mental moments. <laughs> I've got a good heart. <laughs> Now, that Fire in the Booth 2012, I know a lot of people's first question, as soon as we finished playing that was, when we want a new one, we need a new Fire in the Booth from Devs. They might be nicely surprised this week. They might well be nicely yeah. surprised this week. And even better than that, <laughs> I might have like a 32 second clip. What? 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 Oh my, did he? Anymore. You will even wanna spit on the floor When I'm finished here bringing a roar Shot round, there ain't none bigger in store I've been around, front of AM, check my MO Building blocks like Ed Shearer, my Lego Traits in the field, no life in the meadows Nighttime running with the grimiest fellows I hear echoes, I feel as though I live 20 lives already I ain't sure, go so quick I was told Don't blink, so I didn't for a minute and my eyes got sore Bellies with yellow, I feel like metal Chat wet like Marty Pello, I'm what for? That's why I'm on a level when the sun won't settle on my soul When I slip and I slide from the tour Fire in the pool oh, and earlier I said to, I said to Dev, you just done your fight, you've done a fire in the booth, haven't you? And he's like, yeah, it was all right, it went all right. That was a lie, Devs. Nah, do you know, I, I can't judge that my own stuff. That sounds like it's going to be ridiculous. I'll just hope the people feel that way. Wow. Honest, honest to God. It's hard to wow. judge yourself, man. How do you judge yourself? You know what? I, go, yeah, well, I've done brilliant. I'm the best. <laughs> like, You'd be surprised. I just I hope the fans are going nice on me. Listen. You know what I mean? I I'll, need, I'll I, be happy. I've only heard that 32 seconds. I need to hear the rest of that. That is that is going out this week. The album drops on Friday. Let, quickly, man, what can we expect of the album? Because it is so anticipated. Tell us about it. Tell us about the name, what's on it. It's called The it. Devil In. And there's loads of different sides of me on there. I just try, I just tried to... Make tunes with all different thoughts, emotions, feelings, and the madness that is me. The the devil that lies behind me <laughs> is on that CD, Sick. and there's something for everyone. Hopefully, you know what Sick I mean. Man, it's out on Friday as well, so go support that. Devlin is back with a bang. I got to thank you as well, man. We're literally a couple minutes away from jams. Got to thank you for passing through tonight, no, bro. Thanks for having me. Bro. It's always. been great sitting down. As always, you know you got our full support here, bro. Long may it continue. Much love. <laughs>